Surfer Ray, NorCal Bees here, and with queen rearing, it's all about the timing, and that has always been my biggest hurdle, because everything needs to be done precisely, and uh, if you don't get everything done at the right time, things like this happen, so <clears throat> day late, getting them out into mating nukes, and so they're all hatching out. Fortunately, I've uh, had this happen more than once, and I'm pretty good at... Um, um, you know, getting these virgins out and getting them into mating. So first thing I'm going to do is I put them into this queen banking frame. I'm going to stick them into a queenless nuke. And then um, I will introduce them into my queenless mating nukes. Um, I use a technique with uh, spraying with uh, diluted uh, Man Lake Pro Feed. And uh, that works pretty good. I get, you know, just about a 90%, 95% take. Still have a few left to uh, install the old-fashioned way so we'll be able to get a little bit of both worlds here and how we do this all right we have it the virgins are all in their cages i put on some crystallized honey onto each one this is a to give them some honey but also to get all these bees in this queenless nuke to kind of gather around the girls and uh, help warm them up and uh, start taking care of them and then i'll be able to pull these queens out as needed you know i'll be getting them into uh, mating nukes within you know a day or two but i've had them up there for you know over two weeks and they do great you know you just can't have them in there too long because they need to get mated within three weeks so here we go we'll drop this in the bees will all start coming around them and uh it'll you'll be surprised <laughs> At least I was surprised the first time I did this, how fat the queens get and uh, um, how well they take care of them. And so, uh, yeah. So I'm still gonna do like I planned to make a bunch of splits today. And then um, by this evening, we'll start introducing some of these virgins and uh, um, we'll just go from there. All right. All right, here we are at the brood factory. This is where I produce most of my brood to do my queen ring, make splits, load up my finisher and starter. I also use them to make these half frames like you can see right here. So I run two queens inside of the space of one hive and uh, I even split them in half again and I use them to make these mating frames. So this is exactly half of a regular deep frame. And so I can split this up and actually make 20 of these in the space of one deep and then I just pull them out load up these many nukes and then I can drop my cell or my virgin in them see this beautiful brood pattern that these uh, queens are making very stoked on that so what I stick in these many nukes I stick one frame of cat brood one frame of eggs and larvae with maybe some cat brood in there too a frame of honey a partially drawn out frame and an empty frame and then we can drop in our queen cell or our virgin and um away we go one more frame and this one will be ready to seal up and move and i also will be extracting some uh, nurse bees out of the brood factory and bringing those in a bucket and i will uh, be adding extra bees where i'm needed but since i'm moving these to a new location I don't have to worry about a lot of the foragers and other bees uh, going back because when I make the splits here I go back the next day and any hive that I any mating nuke that I split that's that has light on bees then I add another cup of bees to them because sometimes you get a bunch of foragers even though you're pulling out frames of uh, brood mainly all right there it is loaded up ready for them to draw it all back out all right, I got the mating nuke set up in this out yard over here. And uh, whenever I transfer bees, I use eighth inch hardware cloth. I just cut it to length. I bend it on a 90 and then I just wedge it in there. And uh, that works very well to A, keep them in there and B, um, keep them ventilated. And now because these are new colonies I'm afraid of them getting robbed out and stuff I will just bend over that corner and I will uh, shove this in here and just leave that little bit of space right there 
for them to get in and out of. And that way uh, you have less area to defend. All right, let's uh, introduce some queen cells and sure some virgins. And we're gonna add some bees. I got a bucket of bees here. Here's the carry cell. It makes your life a lot easier if you're raising queens, I'll tell you that. The downside of this thing is it's super expensive. With shipping from New Zealand, it's almost 600 bucks. But, uh, you know, I finally broke down and bought it because it just makes life so easy. It runs off 12 volts. You just keep it plugged into your car. It keeps your cells warm. I travel up to uh, Randy Oliver's, get cells from him, bring them down. I've had cells up into three days into this, and uh, they still hatched out and did well. So it's it's a really good good system here. You know, when you're putting cells out somewhere else, like I can take them from my house and then uh, move them over to where I need to go and just keep them warm. All right. So here's our little mating nuke. I'm gonna take out this frame right here. My guy called in sick today. He was supposed to be here for this, but uh, anyway, there's a little frame of brood and some nectar. Here's a queen cell we're gonna add. It's just about ready to hatch out. Nice fat queen cell. I like to push them up right up around here. You can see that trap door is already kind of open. She's going to come out any second here. Um, I'm going to put it back down in here. And I'm actually going to add a cup of bees. And the way I do that... Alright, so the first thing I do is I give this bucket a little wrap, get the bees down there, open it up, give them a little spritz. This is um, Man Lake Pro Feed and warm water, 50-50. I just come in here, get a little cup, half a cup, pour them on there, close my lid back up. We'll just all run it in there. Sometimes I give them a little smoke to kind of drive them down in there. There you have it. This one's ready to go. It's got a queen cell. It's got some bees. It's got some brood. I use my paint marking pens right there to write everything on the lid so I know what's going on. Green means it's up and going and doing good. Blue means it's okay, but there's something, you know, we gotta keep an eye on. And red means uh, danger, danger. <laughs> so, oh, we got some escapees here. Get back in there. Um, yep, that's how we do it. So now I'm gonna show you how I do it with a virgin. Sorry for the crappy filming, but it's hard to film and do everything at the same time. Okay, the best way I found to introduce a virgin is I get my spray bottle and I spray down the frames. Now I'm using the same Man Lake Pro Feed and water, and I just go down both sides. This is actually warm, so it's not too hard on them. Just give it a little spray on both sides. Get the bees nice and coated, nice and sticky. So now they're focused on cleaning themselves. Then I pull out a frame, put it upside down, or lay it down, I should say. Get a little more spray. And I'll go into here, get my virgin. And then I take my virgin and I release her if she wants to come out. <laughs> and there she is. Give her a little spray too so she blends in. And 
and they're not even paying attention to her. She's hungry. She's going for some honey right away. All right, and then we put her back in. And close it up. This one's got enough bees. I don't gotta add no bees to it. Come back in, uh, you know, a couple weeks. Sometimes I come a little sooner, but you know, two weeks is about minimum before you're most likely gonna see any eggs. Sometimes I just come back, especially if I have a bunch of extra virgins. I'll come back and just check to see if I see her. I'm pretty good at spotting them, and uh, you know, I usually can find them, and then. Uh, if I don't see one, then I might throw another one in. So that's how we do it. All right, I gotta get cracking, get the rest of these done.